You are welcome to the teaching ministry of Reverend Dr. Femi Olaleye or IKEA Christian Center Global. Get set to be at the fire. The word works. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, we're starting our series on Sparkle. Sparkle, understanding righteousness. Sparkle, understanding righteousness. Hallelujah. Understanding righteousness. <laughs> now, this topic, uh, I think I'm going to be teaching it in this, um, during this series uh, in a different way. Now, those of us who are watching online, please can we share the stream? And let us make sure as many as possible are joining the stream. Um, then also like the stream, praise God, when you join it. Amen. And let's make it as interactive as possible. All right. Comments, questions, things that are a blessing to you. Then you can also share what you've learned, all right, using the hashtag Mega on Twitter to get the conversation going. Amen. Okay. Now, understanding righteousness. Let's turn our Bibles real quickly. Are we having the scriptures on the screen? Huh? What? In a bit. You should be ready already. All right. Let's turn our Bibles real quickly to the book of Romans chapter number 5. Our team scripture will be Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Are we there? Can we read 1, 2, go? What does it say? What is almost there? What are you looking for? Is that you're there or not? All right, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, what does it say? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, faith. Therefore, being justified by faith. So, that word, justified, righteous, all those words are synonyms. Justification. Righteous, righteousness. Those words are synonyms. What I mean by synonyms is that they mean almost the same thing. They are alike in what they mean. Now, if you go to verse 17, all right, it says, if, I, if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, it says, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of what? Righteousness shall reign by one, Jesus Christ. The gift of righteousness. So we now have an introduction into righteousness as a gift. But we will need to define what righteousness is for you or for us to appreciate why it being called a gift is a blessing. Are you with me? All right? Because when you see righteousness as a gift, you need to understand what that means. And how hum um, how magnificent and how humongous that statement itself is. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, look at it. says, For by one man's offense, death reign by one man's not there which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. All right? He says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, uh, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now, let us now do a proper study of righteousness, a word study. Now, in this word study, we are going to be looking at the words righteous and righteousness. You know, this is just part one. We've just started. We're going to look at the word righteous, and we're going to be looking at the word righteousness. Righteous, righteousness. One of the things you're going to find out today, or in this series, is that that word righteous or righteousness is not a Christian word, it's just the word. Amen. So, to understand righteousness, it means we need to understand it in a Christian Now, the word righteous appears, sorry, sit down there, don't go there. The word righteous 
appears 225 times. So 235 times in the Bible. That word righteous appears 235 times in the Bible. 35 times in the New Testament, all right, and 200 times in the Old Testament, all right? That's how frequently the word righteous appears. Now, the first mention of the word righteous is in Genesis chapter number 7. Let's go to Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1, all right? Genesis 7 and verse 1. Have we fixed the scriptures now? Genesis 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen what? Seen righteous before me in this generation. He said, Thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now, that word righteous is the Hebrew word Sadiq. That is T-S-A-D-Y-K. And what it means is lawful. Righteous. It means to be lawful. That means there were rules and you kept them. That's what righteous means. I'm talking about righteous plain without the context of in Christ. You understand what I'm talking about? What it means. Right. So that means when you say a man is righteous, you need to always check what rules did he keep. Because righteous and unrighteous are terms that are made or qualifications made in respect to rules. Laws. So, for example, this man is a law-abiding citizen. Glory to God. It means that there are laws that he is keeping. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah. So you say a man is a law-abiding citizen, or a man is just, means that there were rules that kept. Hallelujah. There were rules that he kept. When you look at those rules and you look at the man's life, you find out that there was nothing in those rules he broke. So we say this guy is righteous. Are you following what I'm saying? So that means that righteousness is not an amorphous or generic term. Righteous or righteousness is not an amorphous or generic term. It is a term made with a law or rules or instruction in mind. Please follow me very well. Though. You have to follow me very well. All right? It's not, it's, it's not amorphous terms. So when he says to Noah, it is you I have found to be righteous. It therefore means that there was something Noah did that aligned with an instruction God gave. That was the basis for him being said to be righteous. Glory to God. So let's, let's follow that story. Amen. There was something he did. Now there are two things you can do from scriptures. That there are two places or two tools. To, there is the doing, there is the doing of the heart. The doing of the heart is faith. The doing of the hands is works. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get that at the back of our mind. Now let's continue. So it means that there was something, praise God, all right, that was instructed that Noah abided by, and for that reason, God said, righteous. You follow? Now look at Genesis chapter 7, verse 5, quickly. Genesis 7, verse 5. I need a lay reader. Can we get the, uh, another phone, uh, microphone for um, Valerie? Let I, let, uh, let's use Valerie. All right. Genesis 7 5 says what? And Noah did what? Noah did what? That mic is not on. All right. Try again. And Noah did according okay. unto all that the Lord commanded. Now, notice Noah did accordingly. So that means there were instructions that were given to Noah that he was complied with. Are you seeing that? Now, what was the instruction Noah was given? Noah was given instructions as regards the ark. Are you following that? Now go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and from verse 7. Pay attention to this teaching. All right, go on. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. I will destroy man whom I have created. 
Yes. Both man and beast, and the creeping thing, mm -hmm. and the fowls of the air. Yes. For it repented me that I have made them. Now notice, God says everybody, all of man, is sinful, have departed. Is that correct? But now look at what he now says in verse 8. But Noah found grace uh -huh. in the eyes of the Lord. Notice, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Next verse, the, now, the Bible now says what? This are the generation of Noah. Yes. Noah was a just man mm -hmm. and perfect in his generation. Yes. And Noah walked with God. Uh -huh. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yes. The earth also was corrupt before God. Yes. And the earth was filled with violence. Yes. And God looked upon the earth, yes. and behold, it was corrupt. Yes. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now notice, so all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. That means they had gone a different way, but Noah was found to be what? To be just. Are you seeing that? Noah was found to be what? To be just. Now the question is this, how was Noah found to be just? We've said that everything God told Noah, to, um, everything Noah, um, God told Noah to do, Noah did it. Is that correct? Is that correct? So that means he did all God told him to do. He obeyed every instruction, and based on the obedience to that instruction, that is righteous. Is that correct? Now, what do we call the obedience to the instructions, or the obedience to the voice or the revelation of God to a man? Hebrews chapter eleven. And verse 7. Hebrews 11 and verse 7. Hebrews 11 7. By yes. faith, Noah being warned of God. Yes, notice. He says, by faith, Noah being warned of God. You see that? By faith, Noah being warned of God, all right, of things of not things seen as yet, moved it with fear, prepared what? An ark to the saving of his house. So the warning of God to Noah was the gospel. Right, because what we have in the flood of Noah is a typology, praise God, of the judgment coming against man because of sin, and the ark is a typology of Christ, who is the savior of man from that coming judgment. Are you seeing that? So the warning of Noah was a message. The warning of Noah was the gospel. Hallelujah. And what Noah did was that Noah, by faith, are you with me? By faith. Follow? I'm going to request for your notes. After this thing. Paul, the guitarist. Your notes, I'm going, I'm going to ask for it. Uh -huh. Now, by faith, Noah. So that means that what justified Noah was what? Was what? Come on, talk to me. Was what? Faith. Was faith. He said, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house, by the which he did what? Condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is what? By faith. Are you seeing that? So that means righteousness or righteous means that something was instructed or there was a law or there is a rule and when you are measured against it, you are justified. You are innocent, which means you abided by it. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, what was the rule or what was the uh, instruction, glory to God, or what was, the, uh, what, was, what was God expecting from man that man was to abide? Simple. The gospel, the message that Christ is the provision for mankind, all right, for safety from the judgment that sin brought. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? So because Noah believed, God says, on the basis of the fact that Noah believed, Noah is what? Righteous. So the righteousness of Noah is a righteousness of what? Faith. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you seeing that? So the righteousness of faith. So what was God looking for? God was looking for, God was expecting, God was expecting faith. 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 So Noah was righteous by faith. Amen. 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 
So, because God warned him, he believed what God said. So, the righteousness of Noah was in that he believed. Glory to God. So, we need to find that even in Genesis, when men were called righteous, their righteousness was based on what? Of faith. Not of works. Because at this time, there was no mosaic law. Are you following what I'm saying? There was no mosaic law. And this man was called righteous. Let me show you another one. So I said we're doing uh, okay, a word study on, on, on righteous. Is that correct? Right? Right? Okay. So let's complete it. Then we'll go to righteousness. So let's just take it in sequence. Let us look at another word, another place where the word righteous is used. We've looked at in the Old Testament where it is a, uh, um, it's the Hebrew word that we've examined, um, Sadiq. Now, let us look at righteous in the New Testament. Look at Romans chapter 3. Understand. So, when a man is said to be unrighteous in the law, that unrighteousness in the law, Matthew, where's the right to material? Okay. That unrighteousness in the law is not just stated just like that. When a man is declared unrighteous by the law or in the law of Moses or by the law of Moses, you know that they are checking the laws and looking at the man. Are you following what I'm saying here? Why? Because a man is righteous based on requirements, based on rules, based on, and is unrighteous based on the sin. So, unrighteousness based by, uh, 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 on the basis of the law of Moses is failing to keep the law of Moses. Whereas, righteousness or unrighteousness on the basis of faith, glory to God, is based on your disobedience or unbelief as regards what God has said concerning who? Christ Jesus. Are you seeing that? So when you say a man is an unbeliever, what are you saying? You are saying that the man has not believed what God has said about what? Jesus Christ. That's an unbeliever. So that means unbeliever is a terminology used for an individual with Christ as reference. Believer is a terminology used for an individual also with Christ as a reference. Are you seeing that? So is righteousness. So is unrighteousness. Glory to God. So is righteousness, and so is unrighteousness. Now, we said Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Look at what it says. In Romans 3, 10, um, Paul, uh, Paul, okay, let us back up to Romans 3 and 6. So we have some context, right? Let's read. This is what? God forbid. For then how, for then shall, how we? shall God judge the world? Continue. For, it, for if the truth of God had more had more abounded through my lie unto his, his glory, mm -hmm. why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Yes. And not rather, as we be slanderous reported, slanderously reported, sorry, and as some affirm that we say, let, let us, us do evil, evil that, good, that may good may come. Whose damnation, Whose damnation is, is this? Continue. What then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise. For, For we, we have, have before proved both, both Jews and, and Gentiles that they are all under what? Sin. Uh -huh. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Now, so when you're talking about Jews, when Paul is saying the Jews and the Gentiles are all under sin, and he says there is none righteous, no, not one, it means that there was an instruction or there was a mandate on the Jews and the Gentile, which the Jew and the Gentile did not believe. Or which the Jew and the Gentile do not what adhere to or meet up to. Are you following what I'm saying here? Come on, are you following what I'm saying here? So when he says there is none righteous, no, not one, it means when we checked everybody, nobody had kept to what? What God wanted. I'm not talking of the law of Moses. I'm talking about what God wanted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this is very, very important. Because righteousness is based on a metric. So, when we are saying that a believer is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, there is, we are saying something. 
When we say that a man is righteous by faith, we are saying something. We are saying that there is a condition, glory to God, or requirement called faith that that man has met. And because he has met it, there is no deficiency in that man. Hallelujah. Because he has met it, there's no deficiency in that man. So, for example, when we are talking about covering air and stuff, it will be illegal to call a woman unrighteous because she did not cover her hair. Why? Because it is not a what? It is not a what? A metric for righteousness. It is not a metric for salvation. Are you following what I'm saying here? So it is the metric that determines the qualification. Amen? Amen. The metric determines the qualification. Those of you watching online, maybe later on we're going to be mandating our midweek services. Those of us in Lagos and maybe in the HG churches will not attend. Because I've noticed that during online services, it's very easy for people to be distracted. You understand? So we are having an online service. I'm seeing in the spirit some people are changing between churches' services. You understand? And that's in discipline. Because you cannot learn like that. Hallelujah. You cannot learn like that. You can't. Learning has to be intentional and focused for it to, for it to happen. You can't be fed like that also. Amen. Amen. Some, there's this fleshy tendency many, many believers have. This, oh, I don't want to lose out. So they are always not wanting to lose out from everything. It's like being in your parents' house and they are serving you beans. But you don't want to lose out on the beans they are selling in another person's house. So as you have eaten beans here, you are now trying to eat beans at the neighbor's house, then go to another person's house to eat on that beans. Then, are you seeing that? Does that help you grow? It doesn't. It's just bad behavior. Glory to God. All right. So we have to, as believers, ensure that we cut down on things that contribute to bad Christian behavior. Amen. All right. Let's continue. So it says, no, there is none righteous, no, not one. So that means for the, when it says there was none righteous, there was a metric they used. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none seeking after God. No, not one. Now, you could actually, when he says there was none seeking after God, if you check, there were people that appeared to be seeking after God. Praise God. Amen. They were, ah, they were going to the, to the temple and offering sacrifices. Praise God. They were doing all those things. But the issue was, was that what God mandated? Was why what God required? Was that what God asked for? No. So, what God asks for is the determinant, all right, for which God will now call a man righteous or unrighteous. We will soon check, check it from Scripture, what God asks for. You will now find out that we have said severally, all right, that what God wanted or what God's plan was, all right, was revealed even in Genesis. From the beginning, it was clear what God wanted. Well, from the beginning, it was clear what God's plan was, what his agenda was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let us look at the word righteousness. Righteousness. Now, look at Genesis 15, 6. Genesis 15, 6. Genesis 15, 6. Yes. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed in the Lord and counted it to him for righteousness. Let us back up a bit so that we can have some, co some context. Let's look at verse from verse 3. Let's three. look at it. What does it say? And, Ab and Abraham said, mm -hmm. Behold, to me thou, to thou, me hast, thou given hast given no, given no uh -huh. seed. And lo, one born in my house is my hair. Yes. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thy hair, yes. but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels mm -hmm. shall be thy hair. Stop. It says, Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in thy hair, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine hair. Now, we've said, in context, this hair God is telling Abraham about was not Isaac, but was what? Was Christ. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us that. 
Amen. That the seed promised to Abraham was not Isaac. That the seed promised to Abraham was what? Was Christ. Now, look at what he says. Next verse. Verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy what? Thy shall seed be. So which seed is he talking about? He's talking about Christ. Are you following? Now, remember Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our what? Own image and after what? Our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion over the what? Kings of the sea. Over the what? Powers of the earth. And over the what? Uh-huh. And Bible says, so God made man what? Image. Then he said to them, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Is that correct? So, you yeah, just be fruitful and multiply. Then God comes in the same you know, context, goes to tell Abraham, he says, listen, I'm going to give you a seed. He's going to be your heir. Praise God. And what? No, now what, what's going on, young man? All right. And he tells, he tells Abraham and says what? I, look at the sky and look at the stars in the sky. How much and the, the numbers, how innumerable the stars are. He says, just as the stars are, so shall that seed I promised you will be. So, in Genesis 1.26, it talks about multiplication of man, the image of God. Then in Genesis 15, he says, look at the stars and the sky. As numerous as they are, that is how this seed I am promising you will be. Praise God. So that means what God is telling Abraham is, if the seed is Christ, glory to God, hallelujah, this seed that is Christ is going to be what? A mighty, innumerable company, glory to God, on the earth. Are you following that? I said, are you following that? Uh -huh. And this seed that will be a mighty innumerable company on the earth is called the image of God. Glory to God. So, the promise of God to Abraham was the mass production of the image of God to whom he has given dominion on the earth. So, the message God was preaching to Abraham was the message of Christ. The gospel of Christ. So that is why in verse 6, look at what it says. Next verse. Verse 6 now says what? And he believed in the Lord. Hold on. He says what? And what? And he believed in the Lord. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him. Counted it to him for what? Righteousness. He believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Why was it counted to him for righteousness? Because what Abraham just fulfilled here is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have what? Exactly. Jesus is everlasting life. So, the moment Abraham believed on the seed that was promised, glory to God, the Bible says righteousness was counted to him. Are you following? Are you following? Yeah. Righteousness was counted to him because he believed. Amen. Now, what is righteousness? What is righteousness? The word righteousness in the Hebrew is sedaka. T S E D A Q A H. Sedaka. All right. And it means justice, equity, correctness. Glory to God. Justice, equity, correctness. So because Abraham believed the message. Abraham was correct before God. Abraham had equity with God. Abraham was just before God. Simply because he believed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Simply because what? He believed. Which tells you that righteousness is a description of how correct a man is in reference to a law. Or how correct a man is in reference to a set requirement.
the requirement of righteousness. Right now, believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Is that not it? If the man believes, he is what? Righteous. Simple. He's righteous. Glory to God. Now let's look at another word, a place where the word righteousness appears. All right, look at Leviticus 19 and verse 14 and 15. Is somebody learning anything today? Uh huh. Let us cross 19 and verse 14 and 15 quickly. Now, notice that shall not what? Cause the dead. Nor put a stumbling block before the blind. Before the blind. Next one. But shall fear the Lord. Yes. I am the Lord. Uh huh. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Notice, you shall do no what? Unrighteousness in judgment. What is he saying? He's saying you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Why is he saying you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment? Because there are clear cut laws, the mosaic law. Are you following? He has already given them a law to follow. So he's now saying when you are judging based on those laws, you must not do what? Unrighteousness. It means that you must adhere to those laws. You understand? So the, the person judging is said to be righteous if he adheres to what was what? What was laid down. Are you following? Aha. Yes, uh-huh. So that is what righteousness is. So it's like this. Many of you, you've written exams. And when the result comes out, they will tell you you satisfied the examiner when you passed. Are you following? Then when you failed, they will say you did not satisfy the examiner. So let's look at it that way. It means you had questions that were based on what you were taught in school and was placed in the designated textbook they gave you. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, you now went, and when they asked you the questions, you gave them the answers based on what they taught you and based on the principles you laid down. You understand? And when you, you passed, they said you satisfied the examiner. So that satisfaction of the examiner is righteousness. So a man cannot be called righteous without being examined. And when he's been examined, there are certain bases that is used as references to examine him. Glory to God. All right. There are certain bases that are used to examine him. Glory to God. That's very, very important. So righteousness is rightness. Righteousness means to adhere to laid forth rules, laws, and principles. For the man in Christ, he is righteous because he what? He has believed the gospel, which is what God has what mandated. As we are going to see as we continue. God has mandated that every man, woman, and child should conform to the image of his son. Anyone who conforms is righteous. Simple. So God is he's not giving you ten things to do. Mm-mm. He said, it's just one. Conform to Jesus. And if you do, you are righteous. So that is what is called the righteousness of faith. Amen. Now, there is now the righteousness of the law, which no man can attain to. The reason why no man can attain to is because the law is so numerous. I was not designed for man to attain to it because no man can. So, it's not that there is something wrong with the law of Moses. There is nothing wrong with the law of Moses. It's just that the law of Moses in itself is too demanding for natural man to keep it. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the spirit of the law of Moses is not thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is not just the physical um, uh, coming together of two bodies that are not married. Mm-mm. It takes it deeper. That adultery is also when you lost after somebody in your heart. Are you following what I'm saying? And when we are talking about the righteousness of the law, it means that you should have never ever lost it. Not that you should have never never committed adultery. So if you lost it, you have broken all. The way the law of Moses works is that if you break one, you break all. So you cannot say I'm righteous because there were 3,000 laws and I broke one. But I kept 2,999. No, you are still unrighteous because of that one you broke. 
So he's saying, by the law of Moses, you cannot be justified before God. Because that's not even what God mandated. Are you following what I'm saying? Because what God mandated was faith in Christ. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Very important. Now let us look at this. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. I just want us to see other places where righteousness appears. Amen. Where righteousness appears. Deuteronomy chapter 6 25. And shall we have righteousness? Mm-hmm. Are you seeing what he's saying? It shall be our what? Righteousness. If we observe to do what? All. So that means the righteousness is tied to a set of rules. Set of commandments. So righteousness is a description that is tied to rules. Tied to laws. For example, you, you're driving and you see the traffic light turn red. And the law, the traffic law says you are supposed to what? To stop. Now, if you stop, you are what? Righteous in that you are dead. But if you drop past, you are what? Unrighteous in that you... So that means that, that description of righteousness is relative to instructions, plans, you know, and, and, and commandments and laws. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, let us now look at righteousness... In, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 1 and 17. Romans 1 17. Yes. Yes. Notice, he says, and herein is the righteousness of what? Of God. Notice what he says. So, so you see, there is the righteousness of the law, and there is the righteousness of who? Of God. Are you seeing that? So when he's talking about the righteousness of God, he's talking about the basis with which God makes a man righteous. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, if you back up Romans chapter 1, let's look at from verse 14, then read into 17, 18, and 19. Let's do that quickly. I am a debtor, mm-hmm. both to the Greek, yes. and to the barbarian, yes. both to the wise, and to the unwise. Mm-hmm. So as much as in, in the meaning, mm-hmm. I am ready to preach the gospel to you that I have through all things. Yes. For so I, I am not as Yes. Notice, hold on. He said, for it is, is, notice now, guys, look at it. Remember we said righteousness, a man is declared righteous with reference to something, set laws, instructions. Hallelujah. All right, set laws and instructions. Noah was said to be righteous because when God preached the gospel to him, he believed it. Abraham was accounted righteous because when God preached the gospel to him, what did he do? He what? He believed it. Adam was unrighteous because when God preached the gospel to him, what did he do? He did not believe it. But Abel, when God preached the gospel to Abel, Abel believed it. We are going to get there. So righteousness and unrighteousness is is in relative to what? Instructions, laws, and commandments. So Saul was found unrighteous because when God gave him instructions, he disobeyed. I I don't know if you understand. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Now, Romans 1, 17, uh, uh, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation. To everyone that what? So, are you seeing what the, the part they play? The part they play is that they, what, they believe what God has said. Because the gospel is God's mandate. The gospel is God's instruction. The gospel is God's proclamation. Whosoever believes on him shall be saved. Amen? God's word is God's mandate. So it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of God, for it is the power of God. So the message concerning Christ is the power of God. On to salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Next verse. It now says, for is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by. So that means in believing the gospel, just men shall live. In beginning the gospel, sinners become just. Hallelujah. In believing the gospel, unrighteous men become what? Righteous men. In believing the gospel. So, the gospel is what God has mandated for men to believe. So, God is not asking men for any other thing than to believe what? 
the gospel. So when a man believes the gospel, in the sight of God, that man is righteous. Are you following? That man is righteous. So the question is this. <laughs> We've said there's the righteousness of God. Is that correct? Which is the righteousness of faith. Then there is the righteousness of the law. Glory to God. Amen. So the question is this. What law was present before the law of Moses? Because if there was a law present, that will explain why Adam is called unrighteous. And why Adam is called a sinner. Are you following what I'm saying here? Uh -huh. So we now know what law was it? What sin was it? Then let's start. Look at Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. Titus chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of God. Yes. And an apostle of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. And the of the truth, after the uh, hold on. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. Yes, and the acknowledgement of the truth, which is after Godless. Next verse, verse 2 now says what? Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. This expression before the world began actually means Genesis. That's what it means. It means from the foundation of the world. So the foundation of the world is in scripture. Because the foundation of the world was revealed to you in scripture. The foundation of the world is the inception of the world. The inception of the world is Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. Are you following what I'm saying? So you must understand that scriptural statements are answered within the confines of scriptures. Now, yes, we say uh, promise before the world began, before time began. Uh, yes, that's also correct. You understand what I'm saying? All right? But... In this context, when he says, with God that cannot lie, promise before the world began. The question we now have to ask is this. Where did Paul see the promise if it was before the world began? Are you following what I'm saying? Because if he saw the promise before the world began, he must have seen it, read it somewhere. Are you following what I'm saying? And the place we read where before the world began, the beginning is Genesis. Are you following what I'm saying? All right. Now, look, you see that word when it says, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That word promised is the Greek word epagelo, epagelon, and it means to announce, to preach. Hallelujah. To announce, to preach. Where do we see God preaching? Where do we see God announcing? Is it not in Genesis? Amen. It's in Genesis. Glory to God. Now, it says, in hope of eternal life, we God promised before the world began. So, God promised eternal life before the world began. So, the question we need now to ask, what is eternal life? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we may know him that is true. Yes. And we, and we are in him. That yes. Is true. Even in his son, because Jesus Christ. This is what? The true God and what? So, Jesus Christ, the knowledge of Christ, amen, or Jesus Christ is the true God and eternal life. Now, for some people that were asking, there is no place in the Bible where Jesus Christ is called God. This is one place where Jesus is called God, amen. Amen. First John 5 20. Jesus is also called God in John chapter 1, verse 14. He says in John 1 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God in 14, and the word became flesh. So the word that was God became flesh. Glory to God. He does not say, and the word was a God. He says, and the word was God. Hallelujah. And the word was God and became flesh. Hallelujah. So Jesus is God that became man. That is God incarnated in humanity. That is Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. All right. We have Isaiah chapter 9, 6. Jesus is called there the mighty God. Glory to God. Amen. In Isaiah 7, 14, Jesus is called there Emmanuel. God is with us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. El is God. Emmanuel is God with. God with us. That is Jesus being God. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Jesus, in his testimony about this, he said, he said, he that has seen me has seen the Father also. John 14. Glory to God. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. Colossians 1.15. The Bible calls him the express image of the Father's person. Glory to God. Who is the image of the invisible God? The image of the invisible God. Colossians 1.15. Glory to God. Hebrews 1.3. He is the effulgence of the Father's person. Amen. Colossians 1.9. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So that means outside of Jesus there is no God. Glory to God. Outside of Jesus, there is no God. If there is any revelation of God that does not come in the face of Jesus Christ, that is false. That's a false God. That is a false spirit. That is a false revelation. Because in him, Jesus, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 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 The Father, the Son, the Spirit. Bodily. Jesus. Jesus is the revelation of the Father. Jesus is the revelation of the Spirit. That's why the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. The Father is the Spirit of the Son. Glory to God. The Father is not going to say something different from the Son. The Son is not going to say something different from the Spirit. Because they are triune. Same substance. Same substance. It's like water, ice, and heat. It's water. Glory to God. It's water. It's just different forms. It's water. Glory to God. I said it's water. Amen. Oh, the Father is like this. The Son is like this. The Spirit is like this. Oh, the Father will accept this. The, the Son will accept this. But the Spirit will not accept this. Mm -mm. What the Spirit will not accept, the Son will not accept. What the Spirit will not accept, the Father will not accept. So the Son said, oh, every sin... Everything you can commit against the Son of Man, but the sin against the Holy Spirit does not, you understand? Is that everything can be forgiven the Son of Man, but the sin against the Holy Spirit is not forgiving any man. What's he talking about there? Who is the Son of Man? He's not the incarnate Christ. Praise God. Who is the Spirit or the Holy Spirit? Is it not the what? The, the, uh, the resurrected Christ that lives in our hearts. Because the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ. Romans 8 10. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ. So when he's talking about the sin against the Holy Spirit, he's talking about rejecting the gospel. Hallelujah. Rejecting the gospel. Because the job of the Spirit is to testify that work, the works of Jesus are the works of God. And to testify that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is the work of God for men to receive. So if a man comes and rejects it, all right, and says, I don't believe these works as the work of God, he says, that man has no forgiveness. It cannot be forgiven. But if that man accepts the gospel, but sins against Christ in that maybe he does not follow the word, he does not, he lies, all right? Maybe he cheats and, and he stumbles in his work. He has forgiveness. Why does he have forgiveness? Because he believed the gospel. And in the gospel, there is what? Forgiveness. Are you following what I'm saying? I was saying. Glory to God. So, Jesus is eternal life. He is eternal life. So, he is the one that was promised. So, in Genesis 1.26. Let's go there. Yes. Let us make man. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and over the of the earth, and over the of the Stop. So, when people say, let us make man in our image, the question is, what is the image? Because image means, the word image in the Greek is icon. In the Hebrew, it's selem. And the word, that word, when you study in the Old Testament, all right, that word is usually used in reference to idols. Most times. In that, you say they had an image. All right, there's there, there, there's Salem and there's one other Hebrew word they use. All right, so you have, but basically what it means is this: it's a. So, when you see the image of an idol, all right, is the how and how that idol is represented. So when you have Baal, right, or Ashdod that the Philistines worship. 
All right? Ashdod had the image of a fish, like a marine god. You understand? Because the Philistines were seagoing people. You understand? So their god was designed like that. You get? So that image was a representation. So they called the image the god. Are you following? What they are saying is that this is how our god looks like. Are you following? So when he says, let us make man in our image, we need to find out because man, notice, the Bible say, didn't say man is the image. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. It means to understand man, we need to look for that image. Who is the image that God was referring to? Because the image is a reference point. Are you following what I'm saying? The image is the what? The reference point. Because that image is when we look at that image, that is God. So God said, God said, let us make man after our image and after our mind like this. Praise God. Amen. All right. Now, who is the image? Now, turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Yes. Who is the image of the invisible God? Stop. stop. Let's start from verse 13. In, all right. Colossians 1 13 says, Who have delivered us from what? The power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of what? Of his dear son. So the son is the context. The kingdom of his dear son. So that means we've been out of darkness and we are in a kingdom. Who owns this kingdom? The son of God. Are you with me? Now, it's not telling us who this son of God is. Next verse. Uh huh. Stop. So, in this son, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So, redemption by the blood, forgiveness of sins. Are you with me? Now, next verse. It now says, Who? So, the who is the son. So the Son, Jesus, is the image, the icon of the invisible God. We don't see God in Genesis. Physically, do we see him there? No. But he tells us that that God in Genesis that you didn't see, but you were hearing. He says Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He now tells us, listen, is the image of the invisible God. But it's not just that. It's not the firstborn. Hallelujah. So, the image of the invisible God came into manifestation as the firstborn of creation. Glory to God. So, when God was talking about mass producing image of God on the earth, he was talking about mass producing them after the image of the firstborn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this firstborn is not just a male. Male and female created the word them. So that means the man in Christ is part of the firstborn. Is member, a member of the church of the firstborn. The female in Christ is a member of what? Of the church of the firstborn. So that's why in Christ Jesus, there is neither male nor female. The description is not by gender. The description is by Christ. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? So it tells you who is the image of the invisible God, the first one of every creature. So what God wanted to do was to mass produce men after the image of Christ on the earth. So in the Old Testament, when the Bible says they've all gone out of the way, there is no righteous, no not one. There is none that seeketh after God. What is God saying? There is no one that looks like Christ. There's no one that has conformed to the image. There is no one that has believed. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. So when he finds and you see, and he says, And this one was righteous. Abel was righteous. When you see the heroes of faith, Hebrews 11, by faith, by faith, by faith, what you are reading there is that those men are the ones that believed. Hallelujah. Then when you see the exploits they did, what God is showing you there in type and shadows, amen, is that signs and wonders is the heritage of those who believe in the firstborn. 
So when he talks about the Deoba, two kingdoms, they raise dead back to life. They stop the mouth of the lions. He's telling you what is possible to those what, who believe in, somebody, uh, in, 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 in the first one. Letting you know that the supernatural is the order of those in the first one. No wonder the prophet says, I am the children, Isaiah 8, 18. I am the children that the Lord has given me. They are for what? Signs and they are for what? Wonders. What is he talking about? He's talking about the, the I and the children you have given me. The children are the one born again after the image of the Son of God. They are the ones that have been given to the Christ. Signs and wonders. So they are the righteousness of God. Glory to God. They are the righteousness of God. Why? They f- align to what was mandated. Conformation to the image. Adam was the first guy. He was to conform to the firstborn. He rejected. We will look at that. Next week is, we have midweek service. Ah, no. The CRC. So there's no music service next week. So what we do is, I'm teaching salvation. Uh, I'm focusing on um, soteriology, um, charismatology. Don't worry. See how it's going to be spirit, 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 spirit. Aye. Spirit, spirit, spirit. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Amen. By the time we finish the RC, we are bone off early, early. Amen. Do I'm a I'm a lato di no gong gong. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll be over bobbing like this. What come on? Ah. You, see, you know, you, before it will take time for you to naturalize. You understand what I'm saying? Kai, laba kaye. It will take time. It will take time for you to naturalize before you come down. Praise God. Make sure you are registered. And those of you that are coming from far, get accommodation. Praise God. We are trying to make it affordable so that you are not distracted. It's going to be four days of power. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So. We see very clearly that Jesus was the mandate. Jesus is the one that God wanted everybody to look like. And that conforming to Jesus, glory to God, is what is called faith. And not conforming to Jesus is what is called what? Unbelief. Glory to God. You know the Bible tells us something. Maybe we don't realize it. But if you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us clearly why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed primarily because of homosexuality. They were destroyed because of unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is rejecting the message. Reject it. Shall I show you? Turn your Bibles quickly to the book of Hebrews. Hey, so ga ba 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 ye. Le ko para ye. Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews quickly. Second Peter. So that's a, uh, Hebrews. <laughs> Glory to God. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. It says, And turning his of so, to them and to ashes, condemn them with an of law, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vet his righteous law from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Now, if you remember the story of Lot, when the angels came, what did the angels tell them to do? The angels told them, go and tell anybody you have in this place that God is about to destroy this city. Are you following what I'm saying? Because Lot had daughters that were married and had kids. And they had in-laws in Sodom. So the angel gave them time to go and something's happening. Praise God. So the same way the angels told Lot that God is destroying this place is the same way they were told to go and tell others that there's destruction coming here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people who obeyed were saved. The people who did not, who did not obey, including Lot's wife, were destroyed. Now, in case you were beginning to think that uh, the Lot and his family were very righteous people. 
we begin to see immediately after their deliverance. Not immediately or not a year later. What happened? Lot and his daughters were in a cave. And our supposedly righteous Lot's daughters had a brilliant idea. Are you following what I'm saying? They said, ah, we need to have children now. You know what? Who's going to marry us now? Ah, ah. They now look at their father. Let us drunk, get him drunk. Then when he's drunk, you will sleep with him this night. Then I will now come and sleep with him. Is that not incest? So let's wait now. Homosexuality and incest. You follow what I'm saying? It was unbelief. It was unbelief that informed the lifestyle of homosexuality in the Sodom and the Gomorrahans. Glory to God. Because the man that has believed, there is a lifestyle we have. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that they that say such things testify that they are looking for a city that has no foundation. Whose builder and maker is God? So that means they are testifying by their faith in Christ that was promised that they don't belong here. That they are sojourners here and there is a city that is their home. And because there is a city that is their home, not this earth, they are staying for fleshly lusts. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. All right. We're going to just round off with this. Look at Romans chapter 8. Quickly, I'm close. I hope you have been blessed. Those of you watching online, if you have been blessed, just drop a, I'm being blessed. I'm learning. Amen. All right. In the comment section. Amen. Romans chapter 8. And 28. I'll show you something. See, Pagaraya. I don't have time to explain some things, but we we'll, we'll have time, seriously. Romans 8, let's start from us, look at 26, 25, 26, 27. 25. But yeah. if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Go on. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in infirmity. Yes. For we know not what we should pray for us. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Spirit itself makes it intercession for us. Which cannot be uttered. Mm-hmm. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. Mm. Because he maketh intercession for the saints. According to the will of God. Of God. Hallelujah. Go on. And we know that all things work together for good. To them and that, that love God. God. To them who are called. Now, you see this word purpose. We will try and see how we can touch it. Purpose there is the Greek word latricia. Latricia. What is latricia? How can I explain it? How many of you have been involved in building? Like maybe your father was building a house. Then he took you to the building site. Alright? Now you see, where they laid this block and laid this block and all the things you see is actually a manifestation of a design. An architectural drawing. So from the architectural drawing, a builder can tell you where everything will be. Are you following? Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. So what Latricia is, or purpose, is the plans and the designs of God beforehand. So purpose is actually designed beforehand. The purpose of a car is determined before the car is manufactured. The purpose of the creation is determined before it is created. In fact, it is that purpose that informs creation. The purpose. That's Latricia. So when he says, and we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to the purpose, he says, to them who are called according to the design God had, for them beforehand. Are you following? The created does not determine purpose. The created discovers purpose. Are you following that? Now, the created discovers purpose. And one of the things you find out about the nature of purpose is that purpose is eternal. 
Latricia is eternal. It's not mundane. So the purpose of a man cannot be carpenter, cannot be doctor, cannot be lawyer, because carpenter, lawyer, doctor is not eternal. There is a difference between your work and your purpose, your job and your purpose. They are not the same. Hallelujah. He said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Notice. Notice. To his purpose. His purpose. His design. His plans beforehand. Next verse. 29. What does this say? Uh -huh. oh, 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 notice. You know purpose is beforehand. Are you seeing that? Beforehand. Now look how it now says, for whom he what? For no. So that means he knew beforehand. He also did what? Predestinate also is what? Beforehand. For no is to, to, to what you know. Predestinate is what you did based on what you know. So for knowledge is what you knew beforehand. Predestinate is what you arrange beforehand based on what you know beforehand. So when he says, for whom he did follow, he also did predestinate to be what? Conform to the image. What is he telling you? He's saying that God's eternal purpose for this man, who is saying all things work together for good for. God's eternal purpose, God's design beforehand was that he knew this man beforehand, hallelujah, and he what? Conformed this man beforehand to the image of one person. Of his son. Hallelujah. That is why you find that Adam was called son of God. Do you see that in Matthew? Adam, when he's talking about the genealogy, when he comes to Adam, he now says, and Adam, which was the son of God. Because the calling of God to Adam was sonship. Hallelujah. But it was sonship that was only possible in Christ. Because Christ Jesus is the what? Is the firstborn. Is the image. Hallelujah. For you to be a son of God, you have to bear the image of Christ. Because it is the spirit of the son of God. Hallelujah. That will now be in your spirit. So that when you cry, Abba Father, it is Jesus crying, Abba Father. A shared DNA. The spirit of the father is the one inside us. The spirit of the father was the one in Jesus. And the spirit of the son is the one in us. Glory to God. So, in the new creation, in obedience to the gospel, sons have taken over the same. Bearing the same image. Hallelujah. As the son of God. Sharing the same life as the son of God. And having the same authority as the son of God. So this was in Latricia, the purpose of God that was initiated before the world began. And what we now see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 was the manifestation in time of what God had purposed before time ever began. So it was because of this purpose of conforming men and women to the image of the Son that creation happened. The reason for creation was not uh, fellowship. Fellowship was part of it. But the reason for creation was Christ. For the purpose of all men is Christ Jesus. So any man that has not discovered Christ has wasted his life. For Christ is his essence. Christ is the purpose of that man. So that man or woman will not be able to come to what? Fulfillment or righteousness. If Christ is absence. Hallelujah. For how can a car fulfill purpose? Glory to God. If we use it as a toilet. Brethren, if I took you out to my SUV outside and said, brothers and sisters, feel free to urinate in there. That, that, that thing you see there is a mobile toilet. And we never drive the car. We never use it for anything. But we use it as a toilet. Would that car have fulfilled purpose? No. Would that car have attained righteousness? No. no. Because the purpose behind its manifestation 
was to transport people from place to place and not to take shit. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you reign? So also, there are many men and women who right now, all right, are living in addiction, all right, in abusive relationships, all right, being messed up right and left, messed up by life, and have not retained the knowledge of Christ in their mind. They are not fulfilling purpose. There are some who are in Christ, born again, but they don't preach the gospel. They don't manifest and they do not yield to express the life of God that is in them. They are not walking in purpose. The purpose of God for all of mankind is conformation to the firstborn. The purpose of God for all of mankind is sonship. For every man, though created, hallelujah, amen, a man, all right, doesn't mean that every man is a son. For sonship is conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. Have you been blessed today? Yes, sir. Have you learned something today? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. So when you say, I am righteous, what do you mean? I have believed the gospel. Amen. I am the righteousness of God does not mean I'm perfect in conduct. Because perfection in conduct is not a requirement for the righteousness of God that is by faith. Praise God. It is the consequence of it. Are you following what I'm saying? Or growth in perfection in conduct is the consequence of believing. It's not the requirement for salvation. Hallelujah. When a man has believed, now he can walk. He can walk before him and be perfect. Walk before him and be mature. Praise God. So it is only when you receive the life you can walk in that life. It is only when you receive the spirit you can walk in the spirit. So the walk in Christ is a walk in purpose and a walk in the spirit. Praise God. I said praise God. All right. Amen. Can we just lift up our hands and just begin to thank God? Amen. Just begin to thank God. Our purpose is eternal. Hey, glory to God. My purpose is eternal. Hallelujah. It's not mundane. My purpose is eternal. Glory. Glory to God. So that's why I have to focus on what's eternal. Amen. I have to focus on what is eternal and not what is corrupt. I have to focus on what's eternal. Hallelujah. We bless God. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... All right, those of us who have Thank you for listening. We are sure that you have been blessed. For more messages, kindly search for our Telegram channel using the link t.me slash oikia cc. God has blessed you.